some of the accomplishments, um, helped bring Southern New Hampshire University to their first playoff appearance in 2019, was a part of the MAC Freedom Coaching Staff of the Year in 2018. Check. U.S. Field Hockey Level 1 Coaching Certification. Check. U.S. Field Hockey High Performance Select 2015. American East Field Hockey Championship Runner-Up 2013. Check, check. Futures Level 1 Select 2013. Participated in the Futures Championship 2012-2013. New Hampshire First Team all state select 2013 seeing a trend here a little bit of a pattern right, pattern right. of excellence right <laughs> union leader player of the year 2013 um other fun facts with, that she included which i really appreciate she's currently a long-term substitute gym teacher she has a bachelor's in communications with a minor in french she has Ooh, a master's too. i know which i i wanted to say muff has that too yeah. uh a bachelor's in communications. She has a master's in education and teaching English to, and speaking of, of other languages. And she has 12 concussions and may have CTE. I'm gonna That's get- why, why do you end with that? Why does she put it in there? With... She put it in there. So I'm gonna bring that up to our question. Okay. <laughs> Avril Erdoti. Did I get that name right? Yes, close. Yes. More Eat less air, or doty, okay. or doty, better. I think that sounds cooler, anyways. I I got I got the first name right, which is what I was nervous about. That, hey, that's ten out of ten on the first name. So we're Perfect. riding. Hey, welcome <laughs> to the show. I'm excited to be here. This is super fun. I'm really glad that I just happened to have a weird connection and happened to respond to Scott's Twitter. Any connection to Scott is weird. So. Um, it's cool. I think you guys would enjoy this story. Um, only reason why I know Scott is because I worked as an intern at a summer baseball team and he was the mascot. He is our mascot. He was Jax. He was the big, he was the guy in the suit. So he was <laughs> probably the funniest person. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've been following him on Twitter since then, but <laughs> we weird way to meet someone but yeah he was the mascot it took me about three weeks to ever really see his face but he was so cool. he, he stayed in character that long yeah it took us a, i think it took a little while but i was also separate areas of the park so it made sense i mean it sounds he, like him yeah he was a good <laughs> i mean he was good he's tall he fit the he fit the costume really really yeah. well so so you are a guru of field hockey I guess so. You can consider me that. I will, well, I will take that title. <laughs> your resume says you're a guru in our book. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Very much so. Maybe more so than any other guru we had previously. <laughs> we need to know, how did you get into field hockey? Um, so I actually got into field hockey because I failed at a different sport, per se. So in fifth grade, I tried out for the volleyball team, and I got cut. And that day, I was waiting in my dad's classroom and the field hockey coach came in and just asked, they needed a manager. I didn't know what I was signing up for. I just said, I'll do it. Cause I was just wanting to do something. And I, ever since then, I kind of started playing field hockey that year. I did a little bit on the field, kind of learning different positions. And then after that, I started goalkeeping and I became a goalie from there. And that's what I went on to play in college. Um, so from fifth grade on till my junior year of college, I played. And then I coached two years after that collegiately, but have done a bunch of little camps and high school, like clinics and stuff. So been pretty involved, which has been fun. My next question is, where is that sport popular? So definitely in the United States, it's not popular <laughs> everywhere. It's really popular on the East Coast. So New England, most towns have it. Um, really, really big in like the NEPA, like New England, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Delaware, New Jersey. That's where like a lot of the really good players come out of in uh, the United States. But otherwise, it's huge in Europe. So like it's a big um, European sport. It's actually the second most popular team sport in the world. So it's just not popular here. <laughs> That's kind of what like when I was researching, 
-hmm. that's kind of the vibe I got was like, Americans are just behind on this. Yeah, it's definitely not popular in America, but if you go anywhere else, I when I studied abroad my senior year, I would go around to Germany. There'd be people pulling their field hockey bags onto the trains and just going to practice. Um, it's a huge thing over there. They have big tournaments and it's more of a uh, social event too, kind of like how there's softball clubs and teams and activities, but um, definitely Midwest, not a big, not a big thing. Um, not in like Colorado, anything. There's a little bit in California. It's starting to grow in Texas a bit, but not big. Once you kind of hit like Pennsylvania, it kind of starts to fizzle out. Yeah, I was the same thing. I was doing some looking and aside from the, the European popularity, I was thinking like in the United States, it has like the growing pattern of like lacrosse was like kind of how I was thinking about it. <clears throat> Very, that's kind of how I best compare it is to lacrosse like it's definitely not like ice hockey at all people usually ask me oh it's like ice hockey but on grass and I say it's nothing like ice hockey the rules are very different um but lacrosse is a better comparison both in popularity and kind of rules and style of play so that's a really good comparison is lacrosse so you've mentioned the rules kind of explain to us what field hockey is I know that's a lot I mean we could <laughs> I understand, <laughs> but can you give us a brief synopsis of what field hockey is? Okay, so we can even start. I took a few notes on like kind of like the history of like what it is. And I learned a few things doing this that I wasn't really aware of. But apparently the first um, cases like you can see of field hockey date back to almost 4,000 years ago. <laughs> they found cave drawings and like Egyptian tombs of people playing with the, with the hooked stick and the ball. Um, and then in the 16th century, there's a similar game in China, but it really didn't start getting big until like the 1800s in England and Nova Scotia. And at that point, it was a men's sport only. <laughs> it was too dangerous for women to play. So that's another thing that I think is really weird in the United States that it's more of a feminized sport. Um, there's only one guy I've ever played against, and he was probably one of the best field hockey players I've ever seen in my life. He was filthy like if you watch ever had the time to watch men's field hockey highlights they are, they like will blow your doors off they're phenomenal oh. um so the first like after that it didn't get into the olympics until 1908 and it's funny that england great britain actually won all the medals that year because <laughs> they had they had four countries going there um, so it was England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales all won all the medals that year. Huh. Women's field hockey was not introduced into the Olympics until 1980, though. So it's like almost this 80 year difference. So it's that's a weird thing that I had no idea um, was such a big separation of when the men started competing and when the women did. And then another really little known fact um, for people is that India and Pakistan were really, really good. And um, from 1928 and 1956, they won the gold medal every year. So there was a really big culture in the India and Pakistan. And um, they've had a lot of tactics and playing styles that have developed from in there. But the games developed a lot since then. And there's so many rules. And that's what I'm saying is a lot to unpack, but Basically, what you have is um, 11 players on the field. So you'll have a goalie. Then most players, most teams will have three defenders, four people in the midfield, and then three forwards. So kind of like that lacrosse setup where you have your lines. Um, but in lacrosse where you're kind of cemented and you can't um, go across the lines, field hockey is more fluid. That's so what you I was wondering. Yeah, you can cross over. There's no such thing as offsides in field hockey. Um, so if you have the ball as a, your center defender, you could take the ball all the way up and you can score. And that's not an issue. So there's no such thing as offsides in this sport, which is a big positive, I think. And I really like that um, aspect of the game because it makes it really fluid. Yeah. And because there's so many whistles and rules otherwise that if you had offsides, it would be almost impossible to play. Um, is there any questions so far? 
No, yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that was, was a big thing. Yeah, the... we were like, is there offsides? Like, and I think that differentiates it from hockey too. Is that there's sides? So, and, and whereas field hockey, there's not. Um, do you have to keep your stick and, and be bent over the entire time? Muff and I were debating this. No, you do not. You do not have to be like bent over. You can run. There's a lot of drills where we'd have to kind of the field players would have to run and work on how you transition from being low and then picking up your stick and running separately. No, that would be very hard. And there's yeah. a question that you'd hurt, break your back playing field hockey because you're bent over, but we were trained to use your legs more. So it's more like a squat position than with your back. Um, but yeah, with ice hockey, I know you're more kind of in that squat position when you're on the ice, but field hockey, you're not bent down as much. Okay. That was yeah. Yeah, got that covered. <laughs> yeah, that was really what, hard. To play. Yeah, what um, what's the typical um, equipment that is used, like safety equipment, as well as the typical um, jersey? Like, what 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 are you wearing? What all do you have? So for it, it really is separate. So we'll start with the field players because it's way less than what I would wear. Field players, you'd have to have shin pads, um, mouth guard. In high school, you used to have to wear like lacrosse goggles. So like, you know what the, yeah. and I had to <clears throat> in high school about how that should have been not like, you shouldn't be wearing goggles because it was unsafe and it caused a lot of um, blind spots and people were getting in accidents and running into each other. So recently there's been a rule changed and now you don't wear goggles in high school. Once you get to college, goggles are not a thing either. So you just need a mouth guard, you need your stick, and you need shin pads for field players. And then the uh, uniforms uh, are jerseys and then kilts or skirt and then spandex underneath. Uh, the hairstyle's kind of big in field hockey, if that makes sense. I know each sport kind of has their own, I'm gonna say a kind of swag or their own thing and um, braids are kind of big or ponytails with multiple different holders on the way down. I don't know, we'd always braid each other's hair before game day. So that was kind of the thing. Um, but then you'd have the goalies, which would be me. And we had so much, stuff, so much, um, I'd wear a female cup and then I'd wear like a, um, a girdle, which is kind of like the hockey pants. And then I'd have boots. So foam boots and then leg guards, which are similar to like the ice hockey leg guards, but made out of foam. Then I have a chest protector. I'd have shoulders and then I'd wear, um, just a pair of big, uh, basketball shorts over my pants a jersey over my chest and then i'd have two big foam gloves a neck guard and a helmet so i'd be like fully suited up and i'd have a stick dang this because like th th what you're describing to me sounds like a major league lacrosse goalie like because it's like you're pretty well, much entirely padded up yeah so i would wear more than the lacrosse players yeah and it's well, it was yeah preseason fun no i um, couldn't imagine but it was, and they'd always still find spots. Uh, I'd go see doctors sometimes and I'd have all these bruises on my legs and they're always wondering like, are you cool? Is everything like safe? Uh, I have to explain, like, yeah, we're fine. I'm just a goalie. Like I just rather it hit me than go on the goal. Um, but that's really it. Uh, it's kind of an expensive sport to play just because the stick is always kind of more expensive. So I feel like a lot of people kind of go towards soccer since it's soccer is a cheaper sport, but it's a lot of fun. And I think it's growing because they're trying to make it more affordable with the sticks and then the shin pads, um, which is really nice. I like to see that. And they're really um, a lot of programs out there trying to grow the sport in more uh, like this uh, areas that might not have enough money or maybe more inner city areas that don't have the opportunity. So it's really cool for a sport that's not as easily accessible because it might be a little bit expensive sometimes. How expensive is a stick? Um, so me, I go to play it against sports sometimes and I'll look and you can get a decent stick there for like 30 or $40. Okay. But the sticks that I'll find there, you can get like a $400 stick for like $30. I just got one the other day that we use in college for like four hundred, five hundred dollars, and I got it for thirty bucks. So you're talking top of the line stick. If you bought new, is four hundred dollars? Yeah, for like sometimes wow. you're going 
that my goal whole goalie set was over a grand and, Holy and hell. division one each new each new player they'd get you a full new set so the universities that i went to got me a full set of gear each time each place i went they got me full new sets wow it's crazy wow. Like when you have it be funded, like what we get compared to division one being fully funded versus a division three school and not having the funding and like having to pay more for your own stick and your own, um, your own uh, gear and everything compared to having it given to you. The stick. Why mm -hmm. is it so short? Like, could it be a little longer? Like In some prefer so some people especially if you're playing defense kind of like in lacrosse how the defenders like the uh longer stick sometimes in field hockey i know girls who would pick a stick a few inches longer because it would extend their reach but um that's actually a really good question it's, it's more for the hitting it's a better way to hit um i know in hockey you have the long slap shot but the way your hands move when you're hitting field hockey is different you keep your hands together so that's why it's shorter, just for the aerodynamic um, when you swing through, because if you were to move your hands apart, it wouldn't work as well. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I think it's just probably something to do with the grass um, versus the ice too. Um, yeah, that but... makes sense. What's the size of the the playing field? It's a I know a hundred long, and I think yeah. I always forget the width. I want to say sixty meters wide i'm not sure I, I meant to look that one up how no. wide oh you're good no nah, it's, it's so it's, it's about the size of a football field yeah you just could literally make it up and we'd be okay yeah. with it, <laughs> <laughs> it, <sent> it. <laughs> but and i've run them so many times i should know the dimensions yeah i bet yeah um and there's also a lot of different styles of field so they um you could play on grass you could play an astro turf which is more of a football based turf and then there is um, Astro, which is like carpet almost, and you would water it. So my fields got watered every day before practice. Um, and that was to make the ball move faster as well as injury prevention. Because if you didn't water it, you'd get stuck. And we had our women's lacrosse team playing on it in the spring. And we had like three or four girls on the lacrosse team blow out their ACLs Ooh. because they wouldn't water the turf which is tough. And I just think that just made me hurt because yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. It's really hard. And so you have to make sure those are watered, but there's three different playing surfaces and the game's totally different on each surface. So that's a whole nother level. And if you're playing at the division two or three, you might have three games in a row on three different surfaces. Can you describe the ball for us and like what it compares to? Okay, I'm trying to think. So it's um, a little bit bigger than a lacrosse ball. And it's about, it's not totally, it's hollow in the middle. There's like a little bit hollow, but it's about that thick. It's probably about two inches thick. And if you get hit with it, it hurts. Like you get drilled, it's going to leave a mark. Um, so it's a pretty sturdy ball. It doesn't give, it's not um, rubberized. It's more of a hard plastic. Okay. Um, so I'd compare it if I like a baseball sized and if the cork wasn't there, you know what I mean? Like the yeah. inner cork was gone because there's an empty space in the middle of a field hockey ball. So if the whole outside was still there, but the cork was gone, maybe would be a good comparison. How fast does that thing come at a goalie? Like how fast is that thing coming at you? So if you're on AstroTurf where the ball can move at its fastest and if there's a girl I played with my freshman year, she was from Holland and she was by, by far her and this girl from Germany who went on to be um, female player of the year, the year after I played with her, um, they could probably get it to like 70 miles an hour. They could shoot like real, <laughs> real fast. There's girls I would just... <laughs> I was, I was, um, that was when I was with Albany and they were 14th in the country. So I would just stand there and hope I didn't get hit. Where yeah. I wasn't. They were really good. <laughs> um, Oof. but usually for uh, 40, if they can hit it decently, but on Astro turf, it gets really fast. Um, and it's just that, like I said, then you go to a field turf and it kind of slows down a little bit. 
because it's not as quick. So I saw a thing about indoor field hockey. Yes, that's a whole different thing too because you play with less people and then the rules are different with indoor. Is it still field hockey? Yes. Okay. Still field hockey. Um, but the rules are different. You really can't lift the ball in the air at all. And you can't, you have to keep it totally on the ground and you play with less people. So I think now they play five total. So you have one goalie and then four players on the court and they just had their big indoor tournament, which was taking place actually in, they do it in Lancaster, Pennsylvania now at their big USA field hockey facility. Um, so they just had that big national tournament for indoor but they use boards too, which is really cool. So it's kind of more like a hockey setup and you can use the boards to get angles and you can pass off the board a little bit, use it as an extra uh, defender to make blocks. So it changes up the style of game a little bit more, makes it a little bit faster. So the U.S. field hockey facility is in Lancaster, PA. Yeah, it is. And it's <laughs> huge. There's two, I think there's two outdoor facilities and there's a bunch of indoor facilities now too. It used to be down in uh, Virginia Beach and now it's in Lancaster. I see your wheels spinning, Muff. You want to make a road trip? We could to, we Lanc to, to Lancaster. We've, um, been there. we've done that. We've made road trips. I mean, obviously we want to plan this around the event. We yeah, we should show go up randomly. The next championship. <laughs> and sometimes they have exp um, expedition games. So they have the um, uh, they have like the USA women's team play other countries will have other teams come fly in and play at the uh, facilities back when i did one of the championships i watched them play argentina live which was really cool this sounds so cool like i'm yeah. so into this right now this is oh awesome. okay so obviously we've established you were a goalie and i'm assuming that the physical nature of being a goalie and or getting hit with the ball is what has caused your concussions a good amount of them, yes. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. How physical is this sport? Like, is there a, are there a lot of collisions, or is that a foul? Like, how does how what's the physical nature from the sport? So I always say that you're really not. It's not. You're not supposed to be physical. It's really kind of like a woman's across thing where you're not encouraged to run into people. You're not encouraged to hit people, but. Obviously, I've seen it get physical, especially when you're playing at a high level and you want to win. Um, there's some girls I know who could not stay on their feet. <laughs> They're always flopping and sliding into other people. Um, me as a goalie, um, there were skills where you were told to slide into oncoming players, and I would do that a lot. It was one of my favorites. So I was really <laughs> aggressive. That was my that was my kind of calling card. I was an extremely aggressive goalkeeper, so I would go out and play that way. Um, I usually would not get called for it because it was part of the style of play. So goalkeepers could be very aggressive. Um, however, I think I see girls kind of pushy, be a little shubby and you probably get called talk to for it, but um, they let it slide sometimes, maybe give you a warning, but as long as you're really not <laughs> hitting anyone with your stick, you're not quite cross-checking anyone, you're pretty much fine. Um, but I never really saw anyone get out of hand. There was no big fights, but I saw some girls get hit in the eye with a ball, get hit in the head. Like things do get, I guess a girl get lose all of her teeth in her mouth guard. Like things get brutal out there, but not always. Um, uh, on not intentionally brutal. <laughs> just it happens. Trying to yeah. each other's neck, but yeah. Do people like tap their shin guards with the stick? Like, is that like a thing? Like I can see that being like a way to get chippy with somebody. Oh. Yeah, I think that that and just kind of like getting to get in people's um like get people out of position, you kind of box them out. So in the circle, you box them out to get out of the way. So that's another way to get kind of chippy. Like I would push people out of the way with my shoulders. Like I would just kind of be getting my position, but I'd push them if they're in my way. There's a lot of tactics people had um, that I never always subscribed to. One of the goalies I used to work, <laughs> I used to play with said, to take your stick and like lift up their skirt because it makes them uncomfortable and they move away. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that, but whatever I'm going to do, if that, if that works for you. But yeah, so there's always different things that people had um, ideas on, but it can get catty, especially there's teams that we'd play against that we'd always have bad blood with, um, especially 
in America East, there's a lot of really good teams. So we'd play them over and over again. And we'd really kind of, it would get, it would get ugly sometimes, but it was fun. So if, I mean, I'm into this now, who would I watch collegiately or professionally? Like who would I want to keep track of? So for collegiately division one, the teams that usually do really well are university of Connecticut, um, Duke, UNC, those are three that are usually almost always um, competing for a title. Uh, I'm trying to think. Do you have you guys have any schools in general that you like? I'm, I'm Ohio State. State. I mean, I'm Penn through. State. Field hockey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, so I'm thinking any Big Ten. Maryland is a really good Big Ten school for field hockey. Um, that's Maryland's actually really good. They're usually a top five team. But Ohio State's really good. Uh, Big Ten field hockey's one of the best in the country, actually. Michigan, uh, Michigan State's really good. But I mean, I I'm an I'm an Indiana fan. That's where my family's all from. Um, I was looking to go to school there. I would have loved that, but didn't work out. Um, Ohio State, you could definitely go see a game there. They have a nice field. They have a nice facility. So you're from Indiana? My mom's from Indiana. Okay, and you played in New Hampshire. I played um, at the University of Albany in New York and then UMass Lowell. Okay. So right. Right after, a little elevated to division one. All right. Yeah. But the, the best ones would be those, but uh, Maryland, Ohio state would be a good game. Penn state's also a good team for field hockey too. Damn straight. They are. <laughs> That's I'm another Penn, one. I'm a Penn state fan. <laughs> That's a good game. You could do Penn State, um, Ohio State, and then go to Lancaster after. We should. Like, I I, we should, Bob. Let's catch that game State College, yeah. So what is the youngest age for someone to get involved in field hockey? I have coached camps where it's as young as kindergartners. The It's really has started up much younger than it was when I was a kid because before then, before like now, it really was – when was it available in school but there's so many more programs especially with usa field hockey trying to grow the game they have um a program called that growing the game and it's um set out all around the country for younger players um to kind of give them that option instead of little kids soccer mm -hmm. which is another thing is usually way cheaper where you can just have to buy cleats and kind of sign them up and it's a similar thing um, I helped coach it a few sessions when I, a few years ago, back when I was living home and it was like a practice every Saturday for a few hours and little kids would come and just learn the basics. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity now growing and I think it's starting to spread more out into the Midwest and other regions. I've been kind of researching that a little bit, um, but it's crazy how much younger I talked to some people and there are people who've started it super young. Mm -hmm. um, especially internationals. I've played with a lot of international students and they start it when they're like three, like they start it before wow. they can. That's why they're so good. Um, it's crazy how much they, uh, how they start so much earlier and they're just so comfortable with field hockey, but it's because their parents played for fun all their lives. And it's just such a family sport in other countries. It's just like soccer and baseball for us. This is, I really appreciate you sharing this. This is great. Yeah, it's something that a lot of people just don't really think about because it's so not popular around the country. It's really, even in my, like in Vermont, I live in Vermont now and it's not huge here because Vermont's so small. Um, New England, it's, it's bigger in Massachusetts than it is in New Hampshire, but Pennsylvania is huge. It's like really big in Pennsylvania, um, that tri-state area of Delaware like Maryland, New Jersey. That's where a lot of like the good players come from. Hmm. But there's a lot of good schools starting to pop up. I think the Big Ten being that big powerhouse in the Midwest really helps keep the representation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you got your, your, yeah, your head hamsters running, Jim. You're trying to oh, get your, your kids. You're absolutely. trying to get your kids into this right now. I got a five-year-old daughter who needs to be doing this. Oh. Absolutely. And the great thing I'm going to say about field hockey too is beyond division one, like this is what I'm saying. I've coached division two II and three, and I'm a big supporter of those divisions as well. Division three, there is someone, there's a 
team for anyone. If you want to play field hockey in college, there's so many division three teams out there that have different cultures and different setups that if you want to play, there's a team out there for you, which I think is phenomenal. And there's more programs um, popping up as a lot popping up in the South and the, like the game is growing. So I think that's awesome. And I'm yeah. always, and if you ever needed a guest coach, I could try to come and be a coach. <laughs> yeah. It just I could seems, give a guest. It seems to me like this sport has the opportunity to not only like open the doors for collegiate scholarships but it also like Mm -hmm. brings people together it's a good community it really is i have best friends i still talk to daily um internationally i have friends that i visited um one of my best friends lives in madrid i went to visit her a few years ago for my birthday she's still playing and it's just it really is a good community um i still am in touch with people i've coached with i've played with and i think there's a lot to be said it's a growing community and there's a lot of good people in it. So if you can start young, it's, it's different. And I think it's fun. It's yeah. something that I think there's a lot of different positions, a lot of different things you can do within the sport. So it's kind of something for everyone. How and did, how did you go from player to coach? How, is this so, a natural thing? Um, so what I did was I had applied for a few graduate assistant positions, my senior year of college. So my junior year was actually my last year of being able to play field hockey because of my concussions. I had to, I um, received my 10th at that point. So I've had two since then. And I have received two within a year. Well, four within a year, two back to back within a day. And I went to go see a doctor um, who worked with Patrice Bergeron with his. So he was like a, the Bruins concussion doctor in Concord, Mass. And he told me I should probably stop playing for the best of my brain, which is a good thing. Right. And so I went off, I studied abroad. I took some time to think. When I came back, I started to apply for graduate assistantships and I got um, hired at Wilkes University in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. So I lived there for a year. And, um, the whole, I didn't end up being able to stay there for my whole um, duration of my program. So I moved back home and worked at SNU after, but I always kind of knew I wanted to coach and I had worked with club coaching before and just like summer jobs. And I really enjoyed it. And working on a college campus is so much fun. And with the college students, I really enjoyed it. Um, I was always a coach jumping up and down when we scored. I always got way too into it. (laughs) Um, I was always really hyped up, (laughs) but it was really enjoyable. I think now that I've stepped away from it and started doing something else, I've realized how much I'd love to get back into it. So hopefully when COVID clears up, an opportunity can kind of represent because the seasons, a lot of teams aren't having seasons this year for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, And the ones that were going to have the fall season in the spring, a lot of those teams didn't end up doing it or they're having shortened seasons. So it's best to just try for next year, but. Well, I really do. I mean, this is, this is very eye opening. This is what I definitely would not have. I would not have guessed like, Oh, this is, this is a community. And then for you to. Well, it's a really cool thing. And there's a lot of people who know each other and it's, if you get in with the right group, it's definitely a good, it's just like any sport. If you get in with the right group, it's a good experience, but there's always bad eggs. Sure. That's just the way of life. There's that in any sports, there's politics, there's all that. But for the most part, I can't say enough about field hockey and just the whole 14 years I gave to it. I obviously want to go back to it. So I'm not, mm-hmm. I would be here talking about the sport if I didn't love it. Right. Um, but I definitely want to see it grown more, which, so I like me hearing and being able to talk to you and just putting off light bulbs that you say, Oh, I have a five-year-old and I want to see, if it's like she might be interested in that, it makes me happy because that's the whole goal of this. It's just maybe if I could get one other person interested in it, that's someone else maybe finding something they like and enjoy. And at the end of the day, that's the whole purpose we're here for. Well, that's you got just, me hooked. That's for sure. Yeah. It's fun. And my dad um, never knew field hockey. My dad was a college like baseball player. He became like show dad. He would bring 
his like chair and he'd sit away from everybody and he would take my videos and he would like write down all these notes and he would sit me down. He'd drive me to every tournament I ever had to go to any camp. He helped me email all my coach, all my like recruitment stuff. He made my recruitment video. He was like dance moms, but like feel hockey dad. <laughs> and now since I left, he still does the book in the timer at the middle school field hockey games. Like he is still like loves field hockey and he had never even heard of it until I started playing. So if that is another like push in the right direction, like he was absolutely no idea what it was. And now he, he loves it. He definitely enjoys it. That's cool. There's a lot of whistles. So be prepared for that. There's <laughs> so many rules, but it's definitely fun. And it's fun to watch, especially once it can get kind of fast paced and, and once you can kind of see where the the skills start to build up, but it's fun. It's running around and it's getting outside and you get to hit things. I like that. You get to hit the ball with the good way to get the anger out. Yeah. I don't know. I look at it like sometimes when I was angry, I could just go and like hit the ball into the net a few times. And it was just a nice way to kind of relieve some stress. So it's a good outlet. Yeah. Any, anything else about this sport or even, you know, even things we may have glossed over or didn't get any detail that would be interesting for us to learn or the listeners to I understand? I'm not really sure if there's really anything much. Um, yeah, no, field hockey is just something that I think hopefully can grow more. And next time the Olympics are on, don't change the channel when it's on the TV yeah. because uh it's not often on tv that was one thing i heard actually on the last uh podcast of yours i listened to the guy talking about wrestling on tv and how that's not often on field hockey is definitely something that's not normally on tv um uh, there might be a few networks that have it but definitely pop in and give it a chance because it's kind of interesting you might have to look up the rules because there's tons of them <laughs> and it's are always changing but um the top school like scoring is awesome like look up youtube highlights if you're ever bored but the game's really fun and it's a good way to get active so i think growing it would be a great opportunity for a lot of people i don't think there's anything else really fun <laughs> one thing i'm also often asked with um guys when they ask about guys who play field hockey is if they have to wear skirts the guys do not have to wear skirts just in they case have to wear kilts if they want to, they probably can. I mean, teach their own, but they don't have to. Um, most I of the would. guys where I, I mean, I, I would. I think that would be the coolest way to play it. Like, yeah, personally, hey, listen, yeah, I, I would. So my high school day, our, our nickname was the uh, the Highlanders. So, oh, it's so cool. At some point, you know, we actually had, you know, um, typically we had a bagpiper that would lead us on the field for like the football games and stuff like that. So. Um, I have worn a kilt before. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Miss opportunity not having a field hockey team with the Highlander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of a cool bagpipe bringing him in. <laughs> Guru Connor, he, he's made an appearance on this show. He, he is Irish. And when he, got, when he gets married, he's going to wear a kilt. And we're supposed to go over to Ireland. Scott, myself, um, Scott's wife, Rachel. <laughs> and, and we want to wear kilts to his wedding. So... <laughs> That's amazing. I'm all about kilts. I think that's so cool. Yeah, I am all about kilts. I think that's, I think that's an underlooked aspect of the game. I wish the men would bring it back. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it would make <laughs> the game even more. Exactly. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you reaching out. Absolutely. I had fun. I, I enjoyed this.